Okay, hi. Um, this is the Glance project review and update. I'm Brian Rossmade. I'm the current PTL of Glance. Hi, I'm Nikhil. I am the former PTL of Glance, and um, I'm co-presenting Brian with this um, bike onwards project updates as well as some context um, so far. Okay, so take it away. All right, so what is Glance? What is Glance about? It's a code name for the images service within the OpenStack realm. Um, so if you have been following project updates until today, you might have uh, observed some changes within the Glance mission statement and, um, um, and so forth, but... Um, not what since Okada. Not since Okada. <laughs> so not, not that recently, but it's, it's changed a little bit. It's changed a little bit, and uh, what we have uh, settled down or matured into uh, a long-term vision for the project now is uh, providing services um, and associated libraries like the Glance store as well as the client to be able to store, browse, distribute, share, and um, manage bootable disk images uh, as well as uh, associated data and uh, you know metadata that's not exactly metadata but like tags and other associated information. And this is mostly, most closely related to computing resources, but it could be potentially metadata definitions associated with non-computing resources um, that are neither Nova or Cinder or Ironic. So that's glance and a gist. Moving forward, so just to giving a little bit context on what uh, we have done so far. So glance is a pretty uh, old project. We started in Baxter. And uh, six years now, six years down the line, we we have a great adoption. Um, lots of clouds use it. Uh, some of the, uh, I personally know some of the deployments that are using Glance standalone. Um, so it's a project used just for storing virtual machine images and ma maintaining the uh, image metadata. But um, you know, the a very good use case would be using with um, Nova and Ironic. And storing for uh, you know storing the snapshot as well as uh, bootable uh, image data. So the good news about uh, contributions to Glance is we we get a lot of um, you know good number of contributors and um, we had a good count of 55 for Okada, um, which was approximately the same for the older releases and. We are 34 and counting still for Pike, so um, yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, so I want to give the bad news about uh, contributors. Uh, that's a picture from the PTG. So the, as you may know, the summits were split into the uh, project team gatherings where design work's being done, and then what we're doing here is to try to gather feedback and understand what the use cases are so we can go back and code stuff. Um, but the, uh, the bad news is that we lost our team diverse affiliation tag in December 2016. So the team diverse affiliation tag is something that's put on by the, uh, the technical committee to indicate the maturity of a project. And the idea is that a more mature product is gonna have a more diverse team backing it Oh, I don't know if that's the idea. But the <laughs> idea is that it's better to have more diversity than less because it's a measure of uh, project health. Um, the Glance core reviewer team was really severely impacted by the OpenStack Innovation Center closing last month. Um, so many people pictured there are not currently working on Glance right now, um, including me. So I'm unaffiliated. So anyone needs a uh, good Glance developer, please feel free to contact me um, at your earliest convenience. Um, so just something about the contributors. Um, as you probably know or may not, right, each proposed change requires two approvals before it's merged into the, uh, the code repository. So it's two approvals by, the, by members of the core reviewer team. So that means that a lot of people have to be looking at the code. Um, now, you know, it's, it's a kind of standard, um, standardly accepted thing in software <laughs> engineering, that it takes longer to read and understand code than it does to write it. So just pointing out that the reviewing is an important part of OpenStack, and so in your capacity as 
some of you are operators, some of you are perhaps managers of development teams, right? It, t it takes time not just for your contributors to write their code, but they need to be reviewing stuff also. And that's what makes the community go. And a lot of reviewing happens, which is what contributes to the stability of the code. So it's an important part of the process. So just in functioning, in trying to allocate resources, it's important to keep in mind the reviewing bandwidth as well as just regular contributions. Um, so I, I sort of hinted at this with about us losing the diverse affiliation tag. Um, right, one of the key important aspects of diversity is that a budget cut at one company isn't going to doom a project. Um, so luckily, Glance isn't doomed right now. We do have some people working on it, but it, it's kind of close. And there are other OpenStack projects that have been pretty much wiped out when a company decided to unfund it. Um, another key thing is diverse product viewpoints are really needed to help drive feature development and to keep features from being too narrowly focused to one particular use case, right? So what we're, we're trying to build a big project that's usable and consumable by a lot of different people. So it's really helpful to have a variety of viewpoints as we're focusing on features. And the other thing is, right, if you have developers who don't all report to the same boss, it's easy for them to <laughs> be critical of design decisions or feature things that might not quite make sense in the big picture. So that's another, another reason for team diversity. Okay, so. I, okay, no, that didn't go. Just click it. it is. Okay. All right, open source software. All right, so <laughs> we need your help. So as you could tell, we've lost some people, but people in this room can contribute too. So if you're a developer, you can write contribute code. Everybody knows that. But there are a lot of other contributions that we need to keep the project healthy that you don't necessarily have to be a developer to do. So for instance, with the Glance specs, these are the design specifications for features that are being implemented. So it's really helpful for people to review those, particularly people who use, consume the software and have an idea of what the feature might do or have an idea of what their use cases are because it can help um, make the specs a lot better. So we really like more non-developers to take a look. Then documentation is another thing where the documentation is stored mostly in the code repository. Um, as you're reading through the documentation, some of it's really good and some of it isn't. It would be nice to sort of raise the standard. So if you come across typos or you come across you know, a paragraph that doesn't make a lot of sense or is confusing, you should feel free to put up a patch. Um, and even if you're not, you don't have to be 100%, it's just like, like with the code. When people put in code, believe me, it's pointless to try to get it perfect and then submit your patch because no matter what you do, somebody's gonna have some kind of comment and ask you to make a revision. And after a while, you just get used to it. And it doesn't mean you write crappy code. It just means that you have a better attitude toward uh, you know, people making helpful suggestions. So the same thing with the documentation. I mean, if you, if you see a paragraph that's right, a little ambiguous or it's not quite clear, you don't have to fix it perfectly. It's enough to bring it to our attention by putting up a patch that rewrites it. And then several other people will look at it. The, the documentation goes through the same process. You need two core reviewers to approve it. So people will help you out. So the nice thing about working on OpenStack and being part of this community is it really is a community. I mean, a lot of people focus on you're getting minus twos or minus ones, and that makes you feel bad. But the way I think about it is people are coming up with specific suggestions to help you improve whatever it is you've submitted. So that goes for the, the documentation too. So I'd really encourage anyone who reads the documentation or is looking for documentation and can't find it to go ahead and put up a patch. Um, and then there are also Glance user stories. So the pro this is kind of an underused thing, I think. The product working group has a repository of user stories for particular use cases that aren't features yet, but that could be features. And what's helpful about that is that you have not just one or two product people, but a whole bunch of product people at different companies who are reviewing these things and clarifying the user stories. And that's really helpful when there's something. So for instance, we were talking earlier today about um, Glance image lifecycle management. So there's a, there's a life cycle of images. You introduce a public image, you want your users to consume it, but then some security patches come out, so you want to sort of, you don't want to delete that image because people might still need it, but you sort of want to hide it away and encourage people to use a different image. And it would be nice if there was an automatic way to manage that. Um, and it would be really nice if we had a clear description of a way to do that, that 
captured enough use cases that we'd have something to implement. So that's another place where you can contribute. Um, and it's just the same kind of thing. The user story is in the product working group repository. You just submit a patch and it gets reviewed and then gets merged, just the same as code. Um, and then finally, for developers in the room, we do have some specs that have been approved that are ready to go, um, but don't have anybody working on them yet. So you can browse the specs repository and feel free to pick them up. Either email us or ping us in IRC um, if you've got questions and you can get working on that. So there's plenty of stuff to do. So just a little bit uh, more on what we need uh, help with. So we started this initiative of collaborating more with the operators and getting feedback on what the real world use cases look like, what the real time pain points look like. And um, we have been getting some really good feedback uh, through the virtual sessions and um, on demand operator syncs and uh, sessions like those. Uh, one of those sessions is, um, you know, the, the good initiative by the summit this time is uh, a forum discussion, um, which is a sort of a fishbowl um, a room. If you have been to a, a previous summit, it's like a big room where, you know, lots of collaboration, big collaboration could happen. So uh, we have uh, one right after this one, and we would love to, you know, get some feedback there. It's a meeting room 103 and at 5.30 downstairs. So it's immediately following this session? Yeah. Okay, so what you're here for, the project update. All right, so this is what we're doing. So as you know, Okada was released um, back in February. We're working on Pike now. So I want to tell you what happened to Okada, some things to look for if you haven't deployed it yet. Um, feel free to give us feedback if you have deployed it and have something to say. So part of the reason why the summit was moved to this time instead of being at the same time as the release was people would have a chance to maybe deploy the uh, release and give us some feedback on what to work on. Um, so some things to look for. Um, key thing is image visibility changes. So prior to Okada, there were two visibilities for images in Glance. There was public and private. So the public images, um, the ability to make an image public is protected by policy. It's restricted by default to uh, administrators. And the idea of a public image is that it's one that the cloud provider makes available to users to boot their VMs from. So it's supposed to right, have been tested, it's supposed to be a quality image, and possibly, and well, most likely, right, the cloud provider provides support for that. So if there's a problem with the image, you can complain and get that addressed. So in addition to that, there was the ability to share images in the uh, V2 API that's been since... Uh, I think Folsom, Folsom maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so Folsom or Grizzly, you've been able to share images in the V2 API, um, but the visibility was, was always private. So this posed kind of a problem because as you're looking at the visibility of an image, if it's private, you don't know if it's really private that nobody else other than you can see it or whether it's been shared and other people can see it too. So that was the reason why we introduced the shared visibility. And then there was demand for a kind of, uh, so image sharing glance, you need to know who you want to share the image with because you have to provide an identifier for that person. So that's not a big deal if you want to keep like a customer list or something if you're trying to run an image marketplace. But if you're an open source project and you just want to make an image available for people to use of some cool operating system or something, it's kind of a hassle to find out all these people and then constantly share the image with them. So with a community image, you can make the image available to everyone in the cloud. Now, that's also protected by policy because, right, it could be abused. Um, but the other interesting thing about community images is that they don't show up in the default image list. So there's a, it's basically an anti-spam uh, uh, provision. So if you want to find community images, you have to discover them by making an appropriate API call. So all that stuff's in the documentation. Um, a quick introduction to it's in the API reference that's uh, listed here if you, if you want to take a look. Um, and then associated with the visibility changes are the actual community image sharing themselves. So it's protect, like I said, it's protected by policy just like publicizing an image. So the default is that it's on so that any end user can create a community image. So be aware of that if you're a deployer so that you can change that if you don't like that setting. Um, 
So like I said, it was a feature that had been asked for and we delivered. Um, and the other big thing that happened in Okada was we made some things, so the first two are things that you can see in either the image response or the way you deal with the API. This last thing was behind the scenes. Um, so we've changed the way database migrations happen in Glance. So previously we were, previously we were using a technology called um, SQL, Alchemy, SQL Alchemy Migrate, and now we're using a technology called Alembic. Um, and it's just, the reason we've, we've made the change is it's going to allow us to do zero downtime database upgrades, which is nice for people who want to do complete rolling upgrades with no downtime. Um, now, in the Okada release, we've made the change to Alembic. We've rewritten the database migration scripts, but the zero downtime migrations are not supported. They're experimental um, because we don't, well, what we're working on in Pike is to get real-time testing in the gate to make sure the upgrades work seamlessly. Um, but we're pretty sure it works, so encourage people to try it out. The, um, that's a link to the Glance documentation that explains the uh, database management. I guess the only thing that's visible, not to users, but to operators, is that the identifiers for each migration has changed. So previously they were just a numeral, and now it's a combination of the release name and a numeral. Book, and a numeral. But that's all explained in the documentation, so please take a look. And like I was saying earlier, if you find something ambiguous or something unclear, please put up a patch or let us know in some other way that there's something we could fix. Okay. Oh, this is me too. Okay. So <laughs> I was going to go to the good stuff we're going to be doing in Pike. Well, um, I just want to bring your attention to a couple of recent OSSNs that Glance has been involved in. Um, so an OSSN is an OpenStack security note. Um, so they, they always have really horrifying sounding titles but aren't always quite so bad. Um, so, the, oh, so 0065, users of Glance may be able to replace active image data. So just so that nobody freaks out, right? This is in a non-default configuration where show multiple locations is enabled. So it's not the default. Um, but if you, do use, if you do use the show multiple location setting, you should take a careful look at this uh, OSSN. Um, now, I do want to stress that the checksum of the image can't be changed. So even if someone is able to use the exploit, which is described in the, the OSSN, so you, you can read it there, um, even if they swap out the data, um, the checksum cannot be changed. So a consumer who's actually checking the checksum would detect it and know that there was a problem with the image. Um, but Consumers who aren't so careful could be fooled, possibly. So anyway, so just want to bring that to your attention. And it's got a discussion, and it's, yeah, anyway, it's worth reading the security note just to be up on top of things. And the other one is, um, we haven't, well, we're addressing this one in Pike, so I do want to bring it to your attention as something that you should pay attention to. Um, basically, There, so when you do an image create in Glance, you can specify a UUID. And what will happen is that Glance will apply that UUID if it's not currently in use. But if it is being used, it'll reject the request and you have to either supply a new one or you just do the, probably most people just do the default image create and let Glance assign you a random UUID. Um, but since you have the ability to do that, you can, right, here's, here's what, how the attack would work. Right. You would observe the set of public images that, are, that some deployer has and note their UUIDs. And as, as I was saying earlier, there's an image life cycle with most, with most clouds where somebody takes an image out of circulation. Um, so if it's taken out of circulation by somebody deleting it, um, right, you still can't reuse that UUID because the way Glance works is we do soft deletes. So even though the image is deleted, its UUID is still present in the images table, and so since there's a constraint, the database is going to reject it if you try to reuse it. But, you know, you know, as people are using clouds, images are created, images are deleted, tables get bigger and bigger, and eventually people want to purge the database. And in fact, Glance provides a tool called Glance Manage that allows you to conveniently purge the database. So what, we're, what I'm saying is, don't use that tool unless you know exactly what your situation is. Because if you do purge the database, then those soft deleted 
UUIDs disappear and it's possible to reuse a UUID, right? So in order to make this attack actually happen, you, you have to, s several things have to be the case and the attacker would have to be in a position to flood the database with a bunch of images and then delete them to the extent that, right, you would be forced to purge the database. And he would have to do that in a situation where you didn't notice that this dude was creating all these images and deleting them also. So it's, anyway, it's an actual attack. It could happen. Um, not, I guess I shouldn't say it's not very likely because now that everybody knows how to do it, you could give it a shot. But anyway, the main point is don't use glance manage. What we're going to do is fix this in Pike. And our proposal is this, and I, I want to float this out there because we, we've thought of several ways to do this. I mean, the whole point of right, having a database purge is that you eventually want to compress these tables because they'll just get bigger and bigger. But at the same time, we need to track all the UUIDs. And so you can see these are competing uh, constraints. So um, actually, Erno came up with this idea. So I should say this is Erno, one of our Glance Core reviewers. Um, what we're going to do is not modify the Glance purge so that in the main images table, any of the images that were public when they were deleted will not have their UUID removed. So they'll remain as soft deleted images. And then that way, it'll be impossible for somebody to reuse the UUID of a public image. So that, we're thinking that'll, that'll be good because the percentage of public images is small relative to the total number of images in a cloud, I believe. That's my hypothesis. No, so, no. oh, okay. than private images, okay. Okay, so that's, uh, all right, that's good, that's a good data point. So anyway, what I'm going to do is, are you on the operators list? Yep. All right, excellent. So what I'm gonna do is we're I'm gonna propose this as a spec light and glance and explain this in a little more detail. And then I'm gonna put a, um, that's the point of mentioning here. I'm gonna put out a note to the operators list. So please make sure you, you look at the spec and then uh, give your comments because we're, we're trying to come up with a, a good way to handle this that will allow people to trim the database but won't expose them to this. Another thing we had tried, let me just throw this out as long as we've got a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Another thing we had thought about was, was introducing a policy to restrict um, who can specify a UUID when an image is created because now it's available to anybody. Um, so we didn't like that one quite so much because there are some use cases um, like the hybrid cloud use case where you might want to have the same UID, but somebody who wanted to do that could loosen up the policy. But anyway, so, so let us know and we can have the discussion on the mailing list and on the, on the patch for this. Because um, it's, like, as I'm try, I, like I said, I don't want to overemphasize this because I don't think it's a big problem at the moment, but it could become a problem and we need to deal with it and we want to deal with it in a solid way. So thank you. Okay. Okay, and you were gonna talk about Pike, I think. Sure, um, I can just um, mention some of the developments that we have initiated in Pike. And uh, um, you know, this, this one of the features, uh, image import refactor, which has been long discussed um, across projects, across, uh, you know, um, with Glance, TC, Nova, um, and lots of different considerations in mind and um, we have come up with a significantly detailed, yet, uh, <laughs> yet uh, a good plan about refactoring the Glance API for, uh, which is called Upload Now, but um, a more sophisticated way of uploading image data so that it can actually be an import into your cloud. So, um, if you wanted to support the hybrid cloud use case or if you wanted to use public cloud with different vendors um, which are not even OpenStack, um, you would need a, a sophisticated backend mechanism to, you know, uh, to morph your image in a way that the cloud supports and the operator would, have, would, would be able to support you um, accordingly. So that's a short background on what the feature is. Um, and we have tried to prioritize this and reprioritize this over the cycles. 
Um, and finally, uh, we, you know, the stars have called us to get that MVP <laughs> done in uh, Pike. And, uh, you know, thanks to um, a good number of developers behind this, um, we have a few patches up and then we, uh, you know, we are planning to um, implement that uh, MVP API for uploading and activating the, uh, the images. Um, not all the features that the import would support are, would be implemented in Pike, uh, but you would get uh, uh, a flavor of what the new API would look like. And uh, this would give us um, you know, some opportunity to basically get some real-time feedback um, with, the, with the operators uh, in this cycle as well as uh, prioritize this in the next cycle as well. Yeah, the, the main difference between import and just the image upload is that the import will give the operator a chance to examine the image, um, run tests, on, do whatever you want, basically, before it actually becomes active and is use, it consumable by people. And it's, it's, anyway, you can read the spec. If you print it out, it's probably like 120 pages. I'm not kidding. Um, it's got several FAQs because it got so long. <laughs> but we, we describe in great detail what the use cases are and how to do it. Now, you, you may have heard, um, possibly even me, speak about uh, glance tasks. So we had a first try at this six cycles ago, maybe. Um, uh, yeah. But the, 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 problem, the problem was that the, the API we came up with was extremely flexible, which was great from the operator point. Well, was great from the point of view of some people <laughs> and not great from the point of view of complete interoperability between clouds, basically. So that's why this is, it's kind of complicated. I mean, in one sense it's a simple thing that we want to accomplish, and the other is kind of complicated because what, we, what we've tried to do is take into account the competing demands of public clouds and private clouds of various sizes, but come up with a unified API so that you'd be able to use this no matter what, um, no matter what cloud you contacted, um, even though the cloud didn't support all possible import methods. So I think we've, well, we'll see if we've actually accomplished. Right, that's, I'm sorry, that's the other, the other key thing was it has to be discoverable. So the other, the other main problem with the task-based import was that there's no way to discover really what the calls were, except to read the documentation, which apparently nobody likes to do. So this way, there'll be a call you can make that gives you the, exactly what it is that you have to supply in order to successfully import. Um, there's a call that, because for each of the clouds, right, it doesn't make sense to allow somebody to import a disk that's too big to fit on any of your VMs, right, depending on what your configuration is. So there, and individual clouds may support some formats and not support others. So we've taken all that into account, so all that information will be discoverable, and then you'll be able to import stuff. So I'm just, I don't know, I feel like I have to justify, because it's like, hey, you just import, you know, just upload the image, but it's, you know, a little bit more complicated. Anyway, yeah, I we'll guess have like, something for you in Pike, so be ready. <laughs> I guess, like, a point to add that is we needed to have a feature parity for an important feature in version one of the API that's a copy from URL, and we don't support that in version two by default. So this new API would, with the discoverability, would give you, give the operators and the users leverage to identify if a particular site supports copy from, if it's safe for them to support copy from, and um, you know, if, uh, if your dashboard or um, you know, if your client needs to use that, then um, that, that feature would be there. Yeah, and by the way, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Uh, with the OSSNs, there's an OSSN uh, that's out about copy from, so you <laughs> might want to take a look at it just if you've exposed uh, copy from to your customers. Um, there's some things you should take into account as you, uh, Depends on how your cloud's configured, right? Like everything does. So for a lot of people, it's not a problem at all, but for some people, it might be a vulnerability. So please keep an eye on the OSSNs. Yeah, so this, this feature is a pretty detailed one and it's like a really giant beast. Um, so as an operator, I would uh, really recommend you guys to, um, to keep an eye out when, the, when this is implemented and uh, you'll see that um, uh, release note is highlighted for your convenience as well. <laughs> uh, you can talk about the okay. community goals. So the other thing, so we have, we have um, two other things. We're, we're trying to accomplish the uh, community goals for Pike. So we, I mean, ordinarily we probably wouldn't put this up here, but since we're having personnel problems with Glance, we're uh, sort of 
pulling back on what we can accomplish. So the, the community goals were Python 3.5 support. So again, end users aren't going to see anything from this except that, right, it'll be nice for operators so that you can actually use um, Glance if you're running Python 3.5. Um, it won't have to run 2.7 anymore. And then the control plane and API endpoint deployment via Whiskey. Um, we're just going to make sure that Glance can be run as a Whiskey application. And the idea behind that is just that there are some servers that are very much optimized for this kind of thing, so we might as well, some people want to take advantage of that. So it looked like for a while that wasn't going to go, but uh, Matt Trenish isn't here, is he? Um, but we have a volunteer, uh, volunteer to pick this up, so I think we're actually going to be able to get it done in Pike too. So something to look forward to. All right, and just the, the release themes for Pike. Um, so scalability and resiliency, I mean, the feedback we've been getting is that Glance is operating pretty well, so we don't want to mess with it too much. So that's, it's not that we don't care about that stuff, it's just isn't a focus right now. Um, so with uh, interoperability, that's the image import, gives us a major focus there. And then security um, is associated with image import also, um, because it gives you a way to screen images before you let them loose. Um, and then with mod modularity, um, since we're refactoring the image uh, import process, and then uh, manageability, I guess that's part of it too. Yeah, I guess I like it's, it's like a little bit of overlap with rolling upgrades uh, ah, story right. and then right. uh, to be able to manage images as well. Right, so rolling upgrades will help with that. Uh, can I get a comment on that? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would, uh, sure. So kind of, uh, let's. That not the focus. <laughs> can I can I comment on that? Sure. So um, thank you for pointing that out. I was just about to say, which I forgot, um, <laughs> that image import refactor that we are planning to implement. Um, it's it is user experience uh, as an end goal, but uh, we we want to do an MVP so that um, yeah, yeah, so people it's, it's, it's not, uh, so that it can be experimented. Uh, so we won't be able to uh, provide that by default, but it would be still available for consumption, and then we can evaluate it. So that's why it's not a focus uh, you, right away. But uh, yeah, for sure, in the future cycles, that's, that's going to Yeah, and it does show up purple eventually. <laughs> um, so in, in Queens, what we're looking at is resiliency. So we'll have the MVP of the uh, image import in um, Pike, and then continue to work on it in Queens to uh, make it better. So the same thing with manageability, um, right? completion of the rolling upgrades work. Uh, modularity, just we'll be doing more refactoring to make this stuff more solid. Um, interoperability will drop to a minor focus because we're hoping most of the um, user-facing stuff will be done by then. And then security is, we never want to say security is not a focus. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be keeping an eye on that too as we're going through. And Okay, and then in Queens, so we're, we're asked to, uh, you know, project into Queens. So this is our thoughts. There'll be some further improvements to image import, so that's not a surprise. And then we'll continue with the enhancements to rolling upgrades. Those are the major things we want to accomplish. Um, depending on the personal... Yes, depending on, right. So if you want to make sure this stuff happens, please uh, recruit developers to help out uh, Glance. And then with the, uh, the themes for Rocky, um, we're figuring by then, you know, just general growth in clouds will catch up with Glance, and so we better address scalability a bit. Um, but we're also, we also have some ideas about uh, image caching. So, but, so, you know, projecting out this far, even though Rocky doesn't seem that far away, is, right, it depends on how things go, right? Because if people are using more boot from volume stuff, then maybe caching images is not such a big priority. We'll see. But right now, it seems like there is some work that can be done on the Glance image cache. Um, and then what do we have? Modularity would be a major focus because we'll be refactoring stuff that we've done. And then we've got user experience showing up in Rocky and I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I mean. Uh, We're the, asked to rank all these things and so to a certain extent. I guess like the anticipation buttons. is like, sorry to interrupt, but I guess the anticipation is that image import would be mature enough that we would be able to provide a final product oh, okay. by Rocky and then we say, oh, that's, there you go. Okay. 
And then one thing that's, that's not listed here, um, but I know is a concern from, I'm doing, I do the, uh, we've been doing these operator surveys. Some of you may have seen them and maybe even filled them out. Somebody at the end, we always ask like an open question, you know, are there any other comments you have? And somebody every time has been putting, you know, you really need quotas in, in glance. <laughs> you need better quota handling in glance. So that is, so you may be aware there's a general quotas um, effort underway in OpenStack. So there was a spec that was approved, a cross-project spec that was approved recently. Um, and I just want to, uh, yes, so anyway, so we will be joining the club of having good quotas, but it's a matter of, uh, right, person power as to when that's gonna happen. So it wasn't listed as a particular thing, but I do think that's gonna be something that's sort of in the atmosphere that we'll wanna pull in at some point. And so is that about time? Okay, and then we were at, oh, I, sh sh I wasn't supposed to do this. Okay, that says finish, time is up. So time is up. So here are some questions, but if you go to the next presentation, you can actually uh, do that. Upcoming so if you go to room 103, so just go downstairs, how do you use Glance? We're asking that in two ways, like how do you use Glance, but also how do you use Glance? So. <laughs> We want to get some feedback from operators about what you're doing, um, and I'll explain some of the uh, survey results we've had, but there will also be some Glance people available if you have particular questions about how you want to do something. So thank you very much. Sorry we're like running over, um, but yeah. thanks for attending. Anyway, ping us in uh, IRC or on, you can tweet at us if you really feel like it, or just send something to the mailing list if you have a question about Glance or anything. Thank you. Thank you.